<laughs> Welcome to this week's podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Meyer. I'm in 10th grade. This is my first year on FRC 4607. I did three years back in FLL. I'm the lead of the media department, and this is my first podcast. Now let's have you two introduce yourselves. I am Adam Sir. I am in 10th grade. I have been on FRC ever since, what was it? I think it was fourth grade with Trash Trek, maybe? It's not FRC, it's FLL in fourth grade. Yeah, FLL in fourth <laughs> grade. And I think Trash Trek, wasn't that the season that they had Recycle Rush as well for the big game? I know everybody loves to hate on that one, so funny. I've been in first programs ever since, FTC. Actually planning to do eighth grade in FTC. I think I was. I think it was ninth grade that I was supposed to be in um, FTC, but I got pulled up to FRC because of the COVID pandemic thing, so... Yeah, that ended up working really well because if I hadn't been on that FRC in Ninth Street, I would be totally lost this season. I wouldn't be in a leadership role. I'm Isaac Wendland. I'm a 10th grader, and I've been in first programs since I was in fourth grade. Yeah. What department are you in? Oh, I'm in two departments. I'm in the CAD department and the media marketing department. I should probably also say that I'm in programming department, too. I'm actually the programming lead this season. I'm excited to see what kind of responsibilities that will entail. Hopefully I can achieve our goal of winning that one regional. Okay, um, that sounds great. Let's start off with the basic questions. What are you most excited for this season? Um, trying to win and being able to experience a full FRC season. Okay. Yeah, for me, honestly, it's going to be the regionals. There's probably going to be nothing like the regional experience that I've seen before. I know I remember this one wild story about getting banned from being in the same hotel as the Sock Rapids team. Anything that has the potential pr to produce that kind of craziness, I want to be a part of, for sure. So, sounds great. All right, what do you think the most challenging part of the season will be, Isaac? Uh, probably winning one regional and getting experience and getting people to do stuff. Well, not getting people to do stuff, just... People trying to figure out how they need to do stuff because lots of people are new. Yeah, that's kind of the same thoughts I have. Winning regional, training in the new people. Those are both the things that I was actually going to say about what's going to be most difficult this, this season. Another thing that I think could be difficult this season is getting back on track after we um, had the COVID year last year with the at-home challenge and everything. After that, it's going to be hard for a lot of people to get caught back up. I mean, I, that was my first FRC season during the COVID thing, so I haven't known anything else. So I'm hoping this season I can kind of truly see what a real FRC season is like, even if it is slightly limited by COVID. All right. And so, again, going back to the winning a regional, how do you think we can accomplish that? I think we can accomplish that. Well, obviously I'm a programmer, so I'm biased, but... I think one of the better ways to win a regional would be making our teleop a lot more automated. So Let's talk about school. How are you handling kickoff? Okay, fine. We can talk about kickoff. Ugh. Okay. How was kickoff? Oh, it went just great. You know, I just had all this time to sit there and relax and didn't have to do anything. Okay, how was kickoff for real? For real? Oh, well, I ran around a lot trying to record stuff and do stuff and do strategy. Okay. For me, kickoff was kind of confusing since I was pulled by the lead, like the Ryan lead Swanson. lead, yeah, by Ryan Swanson into the kind of a war room that we have for strategy. I had no idea what was going on since they were talking about all these different team numbers and games by their year that I have never played before or even seen before. Basically, my job was to kind of be their runner boy and get like the manual printed off, decrypt all their files, just kind of. I was kind of moral support in that room. I'm kind of like what Isaac said. I was just kind of doing a whole bunch of nothing. Especially if you're a programmer on those first couple of days, you kind of have to wait for CAD to decide what is even going to be on the robot so you know what you can expect to program. But yeah, it was definitely fun. There was lots of pizza too. I liked that part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember I talked to someone today on my way to class who worked at Godfather. She's like, it was super busy this Saturday. And I'm like, I think I know why it was super busy. <laughs> All right, and what do you think of the game this year? Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. It's simple, but then it's got the hard part of the climbing. That's yeah. probably the main challenge. I agree. It's a bit more. Of, it's not as complicated as Infinite Recharge, I don't think. But since it's a simple game, you can spend a lot more time optimizing every single part of it. And like you said, any team who can get that 15-point climb is going to be very well off in these regionals. 
what, what do you think is going to make it difficult about the 15 point climb? Why is it so well, hard? The main point about the 15 point climb is actually what we spent a lot of that time in the war room talking about is that your robot within the max height limit can reach that middle bar, so the second bar on it, but it cannot reach without traversing the third and fourth bars. So we have had a theoretical design to move to the traverse bar, but it's been deemed probably too complicated. Title now event. for the the big thing, speakers versus headphones. Oh, we better give the viewers some context for this. So I think this started because of me, actually. I know there's this one YouTube channel on YouTube called Dank Pods. He just has a bunch of videos about this high-end audio equipment, like really fancy headphones, like $3,000 sets of headphones. And I kind of watched this channel because he's kind of funny and all. I started to get really interested in headphones, so I did my own research. And now I'm kind of looking for a set of these fancy headphones for myself so I can apparently experience music the way it was meant to be heard, however much you buy into that. So I, I tell, don't buy into that. Yeah. So I tell Isaac <laughs> about this, about why I think I should get headphones. He's like, no, you should get speakers instead. Actually, you can probably tell him about this part because you remember it a well, lot. Well, by better. speakers, we don't mean, like, headphones have speakers in it, but by speakers, we mean, like, on the floor yeah speakers like big speakers yeah big speakers and then after that we kind of had this big all-consuming argument about which was better and it was really oh. really crazy come on adam give us some all right points of so i'm here today to defend better. my point about headphones being in most cases better than speakers i'm not even going to admit that i will admit one case where headphones are better what you don't want people to hear what you're watching because you're editing a video or you're up late at night. That's true, but I think for the kind of people like that we are, like high schoolers, we we can probably use headphones a lot more of the time than speakers. No! <laughs> Here, let me get to this point first. Obviously, if you had an infinite budget, speakers are going to be better than headphones. Because you could literally just build an entire soundproof dome sphere oh, thing yeah. with a couch in the middle and like a oh. hundred different speakers all oh, over yeah. the walls with soundproof foam. But obviously no one has that kind of money. Uh, we can go down a tier. And for like $10,000, you, you can get like what most people will con would consider like a good, like, not like a, high, like high, yeah, quality. high quality. Like, like, like clips. You can get some clips stuff. Yeah. But that's really expensive, especially if you want to go surround sound like 5.1, which means front left, front right, center, and then two channels behind you. Which are the surround left, surround right. And, and the point one is the subwoofer. One yeah. subwoofer. Or you can go for 5.2.2 or 5.2.4, which is five channels, like Adam said, the, then two subwoofers and four ceiling channels, yeah. which are speakers and ceiling to add height. But for most of our case, like if you wanted to have the same kind of audio quality as a pair of speakers for the same price, you could probably only go for a 2.1 setup where it's one speaker on your left, one speaker on your right. You don't get the quite the surround sound, but you still get kind of the feeling of speakers. That's one thing I will admit where speakers are better than headphones too is that you will never be able to get that whole body shaking sensation with headphones that you can with a speaker. And subwoofers. Oh yeah, yeah, subwoofers especially. I've been honestly kind of wanting to buy this like a junk car off of Craigslist and just load it up, load its trunk up <laughs> Adam, with a do you ton even of... have that much money? No. You if I did, I... job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they paid me nine bucks an hour, so even if I stayed, I probably couldn't do You're it. You're not even at your job anymore. Well, that's because of robotics. <laughs> I literally quit because I knew that I wouldn't have any time to work during the robotics season. I'm supposed to be working, but... Okay. We see where that's going. <laughs> All right. Now, here's where my argumentative what? part of this whole thing gets in. So here's my sense. argument. I argue that for the kind of budget that we have as kind of broke high schoolers that... Uh, <laughs> are, given, are you speaking for all of us? You're just yeah, speaking for the ones for who like don't sub have one, job. Let's say sub $500. Like, I won't even spend $500 on a pair of audio because... I spent less than $500 on my 5.1 well, That's kind of what I'm saying is that setup. for any price under $500, you will always be able to find a more high fidelity, which means a better sound reproduction quality, <laughs> pair of headphones, plus any external amplifiers or DACs. Oh, let's see. DACs. Would you, who really cares about how good your sound sounds? I when do. you can get, like, feel the bass. Like, who cares about yeah. doo -doo -doo in my head? You can feel it, but it doesn't make any, it doesn't even matter if what you're feeling is not Adam, good. Adam, audio is very subjective. <laughs> yeah. Since when, is, how do you okay, know here. this? Think these about sound this. better than these. Okay, okay, one at a time. Audio, one at a time. Okay, if, Adam, go ahead. If audio was as subjective as you're saying, then it wouldn't matter whether I, whether I got like a 
ten dollar pair of those in- Apple included earbuds or it's like a fifty four thousand no, dollar pair of H E ones. Subjective to a point. Exactly. And what I'm saying is that for under $500, you will be able to subjectively say that any given pair of headphones plus amp or DAC, as long as it's like not supposed, as long as it's not like stuff that's just purposely made to be expensive and bad, as long as you can, with good intentions, search out quality stuff that actually is good and not just bad and expensive at the same time. So if you... What I'm saying is if you do your proper research, like you're actually going to buy this for yourself and you spend 500 bucks on headphones plus accessories and speakers plus accessories, you'll be able to afford a better pair of headphones and thing and other things, I should say, for the same price that if you spent that equivalent amount of money on speakers and other things. So mm, That's fair, but still, speakers, like subwoofers. Why don't you want you, subwoofers? You don't have any argument to yeah. the entire thing. <laughs> well, like, kind of think about it. Okay, okay. Well, think about it. So, speakers. I mean, headphones. There's two speakers that are jammed to your ears. Mm-hmm. But, like, that. how does that produce the surround sound? That, an act, that Like, actually a speaker being in the front of you, to your side, to your left, to your back, above you. How does that, that two speakers that produce, see, like, nine speakers? I used to think that was one of the main problems with headphones, too. But then I discovered something called virtual surround sound, which it is... sounds like, like a bunch of made-up stuff. No, no, no. I actually did it oh, myself yes, yes, on the, yes. my current pair of headphones. It has a free license key for the some of the surround sound software. It's called DTS Headphone X. What's cool is it takes this... Wait, so you're s- telling me now that I bought my headphones, I can't just plug them in and use them, and they sound good. You're well, telling sound good. me that I have to buy a whole new piece of junk software <laughs> to make my headphones sound as good as my speakers. No, you don't. As long as you're listening to stereo content, which the majority of content, like in games on YouTube, is going to be stereo content, only if you want to listen to that, like surround sound content on like Netflix or Prime Video or any other major video streaming site, is where DTS is going to come into play. Because what that does, it'll take all those channels and use a whole bunch of complicated math to figure out what sounds it needs to send to both of yours to imitate the effect of having a bunch of speakers in your room. I actually tried it out with like a with like a demo video. I got it set up, and let me tell you, it sounded just like there were speakers. I would it was I was able yeah. to point and tell where the sound object it was showing on the screen was coming from. You can do those speakers, but I do get your point because with like. Amps that have like Dolby Digital and Dolby Pro Logic, which decodes stereo into all around you. Yeah. So you're admitting that headphones are better. I'm speakers. not admitting that <laughs> headphones are better. Let me get you into this argument now, since you have been talking too much. What do you think? I think that headphones are better in some situations. In most yeah. situations. Yeah, that's in my. Most situ- one in most situations, that's my point exactly. I'm not even saying that speakers are always going to be worse like they are better like if you had an infinite budget because there's nothing going to be able to be sitting in like a 20 speaker amazing twenty thousand dollar home theater setup but Adam, here's my point do if headphones were better they give you headphones at the movie theater i thought and they use speakers you know the reason that they don't is because at a certain point like i said beyond like there is I'm not sure what the price point is, but I'm going to place it like in the $1,000 to $2,000 range that after you go beyond that point, it isn't cost effective to buy headphones. But since no one here is going to spend $1,000 on a headphone setup, we don't have to worry about that. Like you show me that Polk setup on Amazon, which is like a thousand bucks for a whole 5.1 setup. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that would be better than a nice pair of headphones. So like after that $1,000 point, yeah, speakers are better and a lot more cost affordable because the movie theater has to install like a couple speakers around the wall instead of giving not a couple like movie theaters have like four on each wall well that's still that's ones. still a lot better than giving everybody a, a, a wireless receiver with a pair of hundred dollar headphones that's times true. like a hundred people in the theater is ten thousand dollars easily but you can't get it. and they can get broken too when speakers are probably going to last like 10 20 years or more and no one can break them unless they try to true but still my point is that if i i was I was looking around, and I think I would be able to design a satisfactory headphone. Satisfactory game? No. That's that's a good game, too, but satisfactory <laughs> headphone and amplifier setup for under $250. What kind of speaker setup could you get for under $250? Like okay, Under $250? Or $250 or less. Uh, 
Can we like go to Goodwill and buy some amp? Oh, you, I'm getting stuff used to as part of the price, so oh, you can okay, you can good. use you can get used stuff too. Well, course. let's see, let's see if I can find some family members who can give me some of their amps for free. Can we do that? Yeah, sure. Sweet. Well, no, no, you got you got to make sure that you're actually able to do it though. You can't have a chance like on eBay. I here's what I'm thinking too. Like I, I just, found like a one hundred thirty dollar. I told you about the Sound Blaster X, right? Yeah, that's my that, amp. That's cool. And then like a used pair of I don't know I. I was doing a lot of research See, today. Adam, used speakers are better than used headphones. I don't want someone else's headlights, nasty stuff on my head. You but can replace the headbands on headphones. To you can have replaceable headbands, replaceable earpads. I still don't want like everything. someone stuff they stuck on their head who knows how many times. I got Cheeto dust on it. <laughs> <laughs> like with speakers, I can set it on the ground and never have to touch it again. And then it gets all dusty, so what's your point? Yeah, then it gets, it gets all, all dead skin cells. Yeah. Dead skin cells. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what dust is. How do we know that? Are because we ran Jackson the Jackson? air through. Yeah, seventh grade science. Come on. There's also YouTube right. videos of that. No, it's like 30 I... minutes long. I watched it. <laughs> you go, dude. All right. And here's what I want to say finally. We, we and Isaac were in a call one night. We realized that there is the perfect compromise between these two. Oh, yes. This, this is, this is, this is what we it. think is our best well, solution to the problem. Well, if you want headphones, this is the best solution. But if you want speakers, it's not okay. the best solution. My... Obviously, the problem with headphones is that, as I said earlier, you will never be able to get the body shaking feeling. Bass from subwoofers. Yeah. So what we did, we used that amplifier that I was talking about, the Sound Blaster X3. What it has is it has multiple outputs. What we are able to do is we're able to take headphones, which we can just put on our heads head. and listen to, yeah. to get detail and clarity. And we have the other output goes to a subwoofer amplifier hooked up to which its own a, dedicated which subwoofer. Which has a crossover, so it only plays its dedicated frequency. Yeah, so it doesn't pl try to play the, your whole more. voice chat or game or whatever. It only plays the bass part of it. What you're able to do is you're able to get the clarity part of headphones while you're able to get that shaking feeling from the subwoofer. Yeah. It's still more cost-effective, I think, than a whole at least 5.1. I'm not going to say 2.1, maybe. But at least it's more cost effective than a 5.1, even yeah. if you include the price of the virtual surround sound software, which is only like 20 bucks, by the way. So I think that that is the best compromise between the clarity of headphones and the bass shaking feeling of speakers. Hey, what do you yeah, want? Yeah, I, I started getting really bored. <laughs> okay, Adam, you came over to my house yeah. and I showed you my subwoofer setup. And you, when I put them up yeah, about it was a quarter good. of the way, you smiled. Yeah, I did smile. So you obviously like bass. Yeah, I do like bass. I'm not. I'm not gonna deny that. I do like that bass shaking from subwoofers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, Cameron. Can we get you in here? You. Okay. You got to trade out. Me for like next podcast. No, no. You need to come in here no, no, so we can. Guys can put Cameron in. It's fine. Come on. Okay, Cameron. Okay. It was nice to meet everybody. Bye. <laughs> okay, we got Cameron in here because he is more interested than our... Okay, so we brought you in now because you were more interested than our other host. So wait, right? I just replaced the host? I'm the new one? Yeah. Well, like, you're, like the, the you're like the new we're, host. We're in control of the show now since we can replace the host at will, so you can be banished at okay, our command. Okay, yep. okay, so, well, could you introduce yourself because our other host, we kind of swapped him out because they got bored of our conversation. You seem more interested, so... Yeah. Introduce yourself. Um, well, I'm Cam Northern Scold. My uh this is my first year on robotics in general. I've never been F R C nothing. And I I work in the media marketing department. And yeah. I'm I'm gonna kinda start up this round two of the debate and I honestly think they're both it changes depending on the situation. It's like I mean that's a fair opinion. That's better than just like no headphones at all. Well, Adam, what the heck are you doing? I'm creeping out the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to redo that because yeah. now no, we don't. No, no, we don't. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> hey, robot!